Hi, I'm Jill Andrews, and this is Experience CTN, where we're going to learn more about CTN's volunteers and producers who have supported community media over the past years. And I'm here with Bonnie Gabowitz today, the host of Ward Talk. Thanks for coming on the show, Bonnie. I'm delighted to be here in the other chair. Yeah, it's quite a, a, a the switch for you. Um, let's talk about your background before you came to CTN. Tell us what you did. Well, I was a public school teacher in Westchester, New York for over 30 years. And while being a teacher, I got involved in television work at the local cable studio back in the mid to late 80s. And actually, I, I started doing television work then. I was looking for, pro, for topics that were controversial yet misunderstood. Uh, and so I did a four-part series on South Africa, which was going through the turmoil of getting rid of apartheid, and uh, also herpes, which was misunderstood and people were getting very excited about. And as an educator, I wanted to make sure information was clear and thorough to the public. And that's my position now here at CTN as well. There's a little bit of uh, journalism involved in those stories. That's right. I, I explored uh, education in Cuba, South Africa, uh, and even local schools and what they were doing. So it was quite a journey for me. Well, we are honored to have you as a producer here at CTN. Uh, Thank you. I just want to clarify, I'm the host uh, of the show, uh, and I am delighted to be the host. And uh, we have a wonderful producer, uh, Rob Cross, who helps me behind the scenes, and he does all the arranging. So I want to make sure he gets a plug as well. Yep. Um, Rob is a good person to work with. Uh, let's talk about your, you, when you first got connected with CTN. How did that whole connection happen? Well, I actually chose to move to Ann Arbor because I wanted to get involved with the CTN studio. I wanted to get back into this type of educational work. Uh, so I moved to Ann Arbor and started taking the workshops for producers. Uh, in doing so, I also got involved in some conferences. And through talking and getting to know some of the staff, they learned that I had a background. So I was actually invited to audition for an opening, which was to host Word Talk. So this is actually a show for the, the city of Ann Arbor in which I am hosting it for them. So for people who don't know, can you just tell us what Ward Talk is? Who, what kind of guests do you have? Yes. Ward Talk is the title because we have five wards in the city of Ann Arbor in which there are two uh, council members for each neighborhood or ward. And uh, these are the people who do all the decision making and so many of the complex issues of Ann Arbor. Uh, they're the ones at the meetings that you can, of course, tune in and listen to. They have very big decisions to make. So they come on one at a time. There are uh, five wards. So we have uh, every six months the same person is coming on. And once in a while, we get the mayor as well. And we really explore not only what is in their neighborhood and what is particular to their neighborhood, such as, let's say, uh, uh, development of condo, multi-housing development, or flooding and drainage, that type of thing. And we also talk about the major considerations of the city as a whole. Uh, and I love doing the show because we have so many individuals who have come from various backgrounds of experience and they're all very very hard workers and take their jobs very seriously so this is a very community-based program it's for the people of ann arbor it's an informative program so can you tell the viewers maybe why they should like tune into this well as i see especially this past year or two um Access to news is becoming more, uh, more narrow and more specific. Uh, if you look at just the local newsprint, you know, what, what can you find out easily? And I find there are so many complex issues, as well as really good things happening in the city, that it's hard to get the news easily. Uh, also, there's a limit to how much information you get from one particular source. 
And I think that, as an educator, is very startling to me. And I want to offer a more broad-based uh, platform of information that you might not get from, you know, whatever news is out there. So when you're thinking about what kind of information you're trying to draw out of these guests on your, on your show, how do you plan it so that your own political opinions don't interfere with the information? That's an excellent question, and that's the one question that was first put to me when I was interviewed for this uh, position, is can you be unbiased? Can you keep your opinions to yourself? And I will tell you that when I did the show on South Africa, uh, the Embassy of South Africa actually wrote me a letter and said I was the most unbiased interviewer they had seen on national television, not just local. And they actually invited me to come to South Africa because I was so unbiased. Uh, so it is hard, but I think once you get used to it, I'm acting as the person sitting at home listening. I'm the one who's filtering the information, asking for clarification. Uh, and I just have a very strong belief that my opinion is nobody's business, and I'm here to present all the different points of view. One thing I do incredibly work on is that when you have a complex issue, such as the housing, uh, the homeless, the safety concerns, uh, the traffic, whatever, um, these council members make very big decisions and a lot of people would say, what? You know, why did they do that? Or why aren't they doing the other thing? Or why is it costing so much money? And I find that there are a lot of good reasons why they do what they do and why it costs so much money. For instance, consulting services are very expensive. And these are the little pieces of information that are important to form a good opinion. So I'm here to give the basis of information so people can form their own opinion. So do you form questions that really get straight to those points? That How do you form your, your entire episode into nailing down those big talking points? Well, it, depends, it really depends on what information is given to me, how specific they are, and then what I try to do is speak for the listener at home and say, well, what does that mean? Or how did you arrive at that decision? Or what about this other possibility? So that it, it's a give and take situation where, you know, what comes in, I respond to. And it's a very mental thing as well. I'm constantly listening and then thinking ahead as to how I can make sure that we've really covered that. I'd rather give in-depth discussion on a few topics than skip to 20 topics and just touch upon light, light things. I'd rather get in-depth. I think we actually have a clip from your show. Um, I think we're going to go to that, and let's take a look at you at work. OK. Hello, and welcome to Ward Talk, CTN's look at the political scene in Ann Arbor. I'm your host, Bonnie Gabowitz. We'll be discussing issues and solutions with the city council members from our five wards on the third Wednesday of each month. Joining us is Jane Lum from Ward 2. Welcome, Jane. It's a pleasure to see you again. And it's very nice to see you, Bonnie, and thank you for inviting me back. It's always and a pleasure to be here. we've been getting a lot of information about all, all the things going on in the various wards. We haven't heard about Ward 2 in a while. So let's start with Ward 2. Thank you. And uh, I know there are several important topics to go over. Uh, so let's start with the pedestrian safety and what's, what's going on with you're on high school. Is that something you want to start with? Uh, certainly. So I guess that was you in Jane Lum. Yes, and you can see how well prepared Jane was. She had her whole binder with her. Yeah. <laughs> so we had plenty of things to talk about. Yes. Yeah, so how do you? What What is the more challenging part about hosting that show? 
<laughs> believe it or not, one of them is what, what clothes am I going to wear? <laughs> because you, you really want to look good and look dynamic and uh, really feel comfortable in your own skin. So actually, one of my biggest questions is, what am I going to wear? But really, doing the research is the most important thing. Coming prepared and be available to discuss any topic that the council members feel are the most important. So we have a, a few minutes before the show in which we actually decide which are the most important topics so that we cover them first. So. Tell us about a favorite memory that you had while doing Ward Talk. You know, something that maybe happened during the show, a favorite topic, one episode that you thought was especially good. Actually, the, they're all special to me. I think um, uh, one, one, one of the things you have to be able to do, whether you're a teacher or you're a host on a television show, is you have to anticipate anything and be flexible and, and not necessarily uh, depend on some, some other people. So there was one time that the, uh, the prompter wasn't working. And so to me, that was funny because all of a sudden, there I was, and I'm, I'm doing my own thing. It turned out to be really good. But um, I, I think the, uh, the most special moments are at the very end when we're all finished and the council member will have a very big smile and they'll be thanking me and saying, I really enjoyed that, I think it was a great, and it, it gave them a sense that they were being heard and listened to. So to me, that's the favorite part is the end when we're wrapping up and we have a chance to think about our success. Absolutely. So let's talk about the feedback. What do you have with you today? Is that oh, a letter? I, yes, I brought a letter. Well, I do. People just say things to me, uh, and they really enjoyed the show. But uh, I just wanted to read one particular letter I got, because this, this <clears throat> woman wrote because she said she uh, wants to make, she watches not just my show, but other shows. She said, as someone living with a physical disability, I do not get out into the community to meet my leaders as often as I would like. So programs like Ward Talk are very important to me. They help me learn about what's going on in Washington County right now, what important issues are being addressed and are coming up, and who's, who in charge of those, what of those issues. And um, uh, I especially like seeing the leaders, and it gives me a face to the role. And I get to better understand them because I can see them, I can hear them, and I, I can watch at home. I think the, one of the strengths is being able to watch our sh uh, all the shows online, uh, on demand, so that even if you can't be home at a particular time to watch the show, uh, someone like this who's disabled, who can't get out, can actually plug in whenever she, she can. Yeah, that's a great uh, resource to utilize. So having this outlet, Ward Talk, why do you think people should or utilize the resources we have at CTN? I think that Ann Arbor is a fabulous city, and I, I was so impressed when I started watching the shows. I was so impressed at the breadth of activity and talent and dedication to the, that the citizens, the children. Uh, Happy Tales talks about all the children who are volunteering and going and helping with the, the, the animals. Uh, uh, we see uh, arts and performance in the schools. We see af the athletics. Uh, we, we listen to the policemen in A2 Shield talk about you know, their point of view and what it takes to do their job. And uh, the art fair is one of my favorite things in the summer. And yet, you can watch it during the year as well. So I, I think that the city has so much to offer, and most of us just have a smidgen of an idea of how incredibly uh, talented and diverse we are. So where can people go to learn more about Ward Talk? Well, they can go online to a2gov. I'm not sure exactly what it is, ctn at a2gov.org. Uh, and they have an on-demand 
site where you can choose. They give you a list of all the shows, including Ward Talk. Ward being d W is down at the end. And you can listen to any segment in any month of the year that, that the show is on. Uh, so uh, you can really, if you have a, live in a particular neighborhood, you can choose to listen to what your particular council member has to say, uh, as well as what's going on in the city. So what can people look forward to in the upcoming episodes of Ward Talk? Well, uh, coming up is ma the mayor, Mayor T Christopher Taylor. I'll be talking to him. I don't, I don't talk to him every six months. So when he's on, we have some really important issues, especially what's been going on these past, this past year uh, as to how Ann Arbor is responding to the national events and scene and the fact that we are a welcoming community. I think he'll have a lot to say about that. So I'm looking forward to that show. Um, so what is it about controversial things that just grabs your attention? Con controversy creates commotion, uh, creates intense, passionate feelings. And yet, what's behind the feeling in terms of what are the facts? What, what is known based on how you feel and what your opinion is? I believe that, especially as an educator, uh, if, you, if you lean towards one decision, do you really know what the other, the opposite side is? What are their reasons? What are their considerations? I think we can learn from all points of view. And I think we've just become more narrow over the years. And I, I think this offers a very broad basis of helping you with uh, decisions that you can really live by and feel good about. Well, I just want to personally thank you for being, you know, the host of such an informative show and keeping such an unbiased stance in such a politically driven environment. And I just want to give a plug. The staff here, the crew, they're all wonderful. If anyone wants to be a producer and they live in Ann Arbor, they should definitely look into uh, learning about it because it's a wonderful family here. All right. Thanks, Bonnie. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more Experience CTN. In the meantime, why not come in and experience CTN for yourself? Email ctn at a2gov.org for more information. To watch other CTN programs, visit us online at a2gov.org slash watch CTN. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at CTN Ann Arbor. I want to thank our crew, Matt Drake, Gage Shaughnessy, Justin Wright, Phil Booz, and Megan Lancott, and Alicia May. And I'm Jill Andrews, your host and producer. Thank you and see you next time.